Okay, we're back here. And um, remember, we're back here. We're, we're trying to kill some processes. And here's what we have. Let's, uh, first thing, let's go through and let's just simply, whoops, click on my window here. Let's just simply type the PS command. Okay, and I've got a lot of processes here. And there's a lot of these processes have a totem in them. They've got um, something to do with some sort of uh, totem plug-in or something of that type. Okay, what the story is here is totem is the um, is a movie viewer uh, that can view videos, and I use it a great deal for viewing the videos that I'm actually creating. So I'm always typing totem in the name of the uh, uh, AVI file that I'm creating. Um, or sometimes I'm using it from within. Um, I believe that it's being used as a plug-in in Firefox. So I use Totem quite a bit, and for some reason it doesn't really die correctly. It doesn't um, always um, log out when it should, which I believe is actually what this question mark means. I might have to check that, but I think it means it's a... Um, I forget. They've got a name for that, but um, um, uh, I don't know, ghost or something. But um, it's not ghost. But but there's there's some name. But um, in any case, we want to kill those files. So first thing, those processes. So first thing, let's get a list of those processes. Well, this was our command. Let's pipe those through e egrep. And let's pick out with use egrip to pick out the word totem. And what we get is uh, this is just a list of the processes. And of course, it's kind of a messy list here. Um, because in this case, since I used a pipe, it did, um, it did do the wrap, and it gave me the whole process. But um, here's my process ID right there. Um, um, there's my process IDs, and I'd like to kill each one of these. Now, one way of doing that, and the way I've typically done that, is basically to type this through, I think it's a TR command. Actually, I need to look this one up. Um, sorry about that, but let's look this up. Um, OK. Bin slash kill. OK. The way I often do this, believe it or not, is to pro type this through a TR command that looks like that. And then what that gives us is a list that looks very much like this, but all of the extra spaces will be gone. So nothing will have more than one space. So you see that that is a nice compacted list. And because it's a nice compacted list like that, then I can use a command called cut. And if I use the cut command with a, um, I'm going to want to pick out the field that is this field right here. That will be the, um, uh, uh, I believe that's the first field, and I need a delimiter that is a space. Whoop! Um, delimiter that is a space key, space character. Uh, whoops! Well, that didn't work. Maybe I need the second one. That's the guys I need. So all I want to do is kill all of those guys. So I can do a kill minus. And then there are certain um, uh, signals that you can use in the kill command. We'll discuss those in a moment. I usually use minus 9 on this guy. So I can do this. I will execute this guy. That will give me the list of all the fellows that I am uh, trying to kill. And then I can kill those with um, like that. So basically, whoops. Sorry, minus 9, not minus space 9. 
but ba so basically I can say kill space minus nine space process ID space process ID space process ID space process ID and I've got all these process IDs up here on my screen. So if I do that, that should kill most of my jobs. It will give me a horrible screech, but it should kill most all of my jobs. I am not going to do that at the moment because I believe what I can also do as an option to doing that is I think I can type kill all space totem. Ah, yeah, it didn't work. Um, because totem is not the command, because the command name is totem plugin or totem something else, um, which is why I haven't been using the kill all command. Um, but instead, I've been th going through this nice convoluted system, which does. You hear the beeps? Now let's go back and type ps minus ef space e grep space minus e totem. Oop, well, there's more in there. Let's try it again. This generally works very effectively. Oh, they're, they're gone the second time. They're all gone. Maybe it just took a minute to kill those guys. I'm not sure, but they're all gone. Um, yep, they're all gone. OK, um, the book talks about using the kill all command, and I guess I do not use that very often. I usually kill things the long and hard way, like I just showed you. And I was feeling a little guilty about killing things that way when I read about the kill all command. and. Um, I think actually the reason I do that is some of the things I want to kill, the kill all command won't work for me. So uh, that's why I do it the hard, well, the hard way, the hard way, but the only way uh, that works for the type of things I'm wanting to kill. Um, and of course, if you don't want to type in this long, long pipe like this, um, because this is a pretty incredible pipe. If you just simply would type in, um, you know, ps space minus ef e e grep minus e well, let's say Firefox. Fire. Okay, and you get the list of the. Uh, things associated with Firefox here, and then uh, you can just go in and kill them like uh, like this, minus nine, and take and copy that guy over here, space, copy that guy over here, space. Now, do you know how to copy with the uh, mouse? Basically, what you can do is go up here with the mouse, copy that with your mouse button, and then, um, and then you can enter that wherever the cursor is by just hitting the middle button on your mouse. In other words, depress the, on most mice today, that is the wheel button. So just depress the wheel and it will go in there. And then that will kill all your processes. Of course, I don't want to kill Firefox, so I'm not going to kill those processes. But that's the way to do it. And the truth is, I do that much more often than building the pipe from hell because um, it, it, it's quicker and faster. And, well, I mean, it works well. And usually, you don't have 20 or 30 processes you want to kill. Usually, it's one or two or three processes at the most. So that's normally not an issue. Um, OK, the other thing about the process, killing process command, sometimes you have to be root to kill processes because you can only kill your own processes. Um, you don't want people killing everybody's processes. So, you know, I can't kill, say, this postfix process here. Um, you wouldn't want any old user to be able to bring down the entire database <laughs> system. So for that reason, only root can can do uh, can kill any process on the system. Um, um, 
but root can kill anything because root can take the system down. Um, okay. Um, oh, the other thing is the book talks about the signals on the kill command. And the book gives a whole list of signals on the kill command. I think if you type kill space minus L, it will list the signals for you. Um, this is rather confusing. Don't worry about it a lot. I think the book has four or five signals that they say people generally use. The truth is when I'm killing things, I either kill with no signal, just whatever the default signal is, I'm not sure what it is. It's probably a one or something. And I'll just kill with nothing. That sometimes does not kill my processes. And I will sometimes want something better in killing them or, you know, more thorough, more deadly. And what I will use is uh, either signal nine. Uh, I use signal nine a lot. I may overuse signal nine. Signal nine. It, uh, um, a kill space minus nine says kill that thing. Um, the other one I use quite a bit is number 15. Um, and I don't know the rhyme nor reason. I I mean, I'm pretty brutal about killing things in that sense. That I, I use um, 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 signal nine uh, quite a lot. Um, I guess I use one, nine, and, and 15. Um, the book also talks about two and three. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, whatever works, experiment with it. And um, I think we all come to the same conclusion in the end. But um, OK, um, the next, uh, that, inter that finishes our topics on killing things. Um, the next thing I'm not going to talk about too much is the nice command. The nice command is one of those things that um, is always on certification exams. Um, and the way nice works is um, it allows you to raise and lower the priority of jobs on your system. So um, let's see if we. Does this guy list the nices? Um, some of the processes list, is, list the nice value. Um, A U X. That one lists nice. Probably not. Okay. Well, read the man page. So, uh, you, you c there's a process command that will list the, your nice value, and. Um, you can raise or lower the priority of jobs by using the nice command to raise the pri and raising the priority of the job means you set something like nice space minus n space nine oh minus nineteen or um, see I think it's negative numbers that raise the uh, priority and um, uh, positive numbers lower the priority of a job. Anybody is always allowed to lower the priority of, the, of a job. If you want to be a nice person, you can lower the priority of your own job. Um, only root can raise the priority of jobs. Um, so um, be, because that's that's a pretty seriously important thing to do. Um, on a lot of big systems, they have people sitting around, or at least they used to have people sitting around all the time looking at the jobs on the system, lowering priorities, raising priorities, doing this with a priority, doing that with a priority. Um, and then a manager would come in and say, lower this one and raise this one. And then another manager would come in and say, no, no, that's all wrong. We'll raise the one you just lowered, lower the one you just raised. You know, that's cool. OK, bottom line is I do not believe in playing with the priorities too much because I think two thirds of the time, it, sometimes it's a good thing to do, but my feeling is two thirds of the time when we play with the priorities, we um, it's either a political decision or it's an outright mistake. Um, and we, we actually slow down the system and make it run worse. So 